Hi there. We're going to go over how to represent a system of linear equations using an augmented matrix. We'll see a few examples with two equations and with three equations and talk a bit about the motivation. For starters, here is the basic definition. A single matrix containing the coefficient matrix and the constant matrix for a system of linear equations is called the augmented matrix of the system. So let's see an example of how all this works, including the coefficient matrix and the constant matrix to make sure you know what those are for this system of two linear equations. Notice these equations are in standard form, which is what we want if we're going to represent a system in an augmented matrix. Standard form is good. So on the left, Notice we have variables and their coefficients. We're going to store those in a coefficient matrix. Since they're in standard form, on the right we just have constants, which we'll store in a constant matrix. And then the cool thing about the augmented matrix is that it brings those two matrices together. Let's start with the coefficient matrix. How is information organized here? Well, in the first row, we'll put coefficients from the first equation. In the first column will be the coefficients of x. That's the x column. So looking at my first equation, x has a coefficient of 1. In the second column, we'll have the coefficients of y. So still in the first row, we're looking at the coefficient of y in the first equation. Notice that's negative 2. Not positive 2, it is negative 2. And then similarly, in the second row of the coefficient matrix, we'll have the coefficients of x and y, but from the second equation. So the coefficient of x in the second equation is negative 3, and the coefficient of y is 5. And that's all there is to getting our coefficient matrix. This matrix stores the coefficients from the system. The constant matrix is even easier. It has two rows, one for the first equation and one for the second equation, but it only has one column, a column for the constants. The constant for the first equation is 7, and the constant for the second equation is negative 4. Now we've got our coefficient matrix and our constant matrix. Together, they store all of the information from this system of linear equations. In a way, they sort of reduce the equations. We can kind of ignore the variables and just focus on the numbers and the coefficients that are involved. Now the augmented matrix for the system brings all this information together into a single matrix. And I think you'll agree that it's really straightforward to create. We begin the augmented matrix with the coefficient matrix. It's on the left. Just like in our system of equations, the coefficients and the variables are on the left. So we can just take the entries from our coefficient matrix, and I'll just go ahead and copy and paste them over here into our augmented matrix. The only information that's left is from the constant matrix. And to denote that separation with the augmented matrix, we could put a line separating them, or it's also common to put colons like this. I prefer the line notation, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line there. That separates the coefficient part of our matrix from the constant part. And indeed, all that goes here in the remaining part are the constants. So 7 and negative 4. That's it. This is the augmented matrix for this system of linear equations. And notice how information in the augmented matrix is organized just as it was in the coefficient and constant matrices. The first row contains coefficients and constants from the first equation. The second row contains coefficients and constants from the second equation. The first column contains coefficients of x, the second column contains coefficients of y, and the third row contains constants, which I'll just denote with a c. So then the question is, why would we represent a system of equations like this to begin with? Well, taking all of the information from a system of equations like this and putting it into a single object, this augmented matrix, will allow us to solve these systems pretty systematically. And the fact that it's systematic kind of means that 
computers are really good at working with matrices to solve systems of equations, but of course we want to figure out how it's actually done. We're not going to go into all those details today, but if we were trying to solve this system of equations by working with this augmented matrix, we would perform what are called elementary row operations upon the augmented matrix, which would turn it eventually into a matrix like this. And at this point, if you look at the second row, you'll see that we have zero x's and precisely one y and our constant is negative 17. That tells me that y must be equal to negative 17. I could take that and do substitution and then finish solving the system. That's the broad overview of how this is going to be useful. The transformations we make to get from here to here basically just mimic the sort of things we would do to solve a system of equations using elimination. With that said, let's spend the rest of this video going over a few examples to make sure you've got a good grasp on this. Alright, here are a few examples. Feel free to give it a try yourself before watching the rest of the video for these systems of three equations. As you might expect, the coefficient part of the matrix will contain three columns where the third column is reserved for Z, and it will of course contain three rows where the third row is reserved for the third equation. Give it a try. All right, let's go through these together. Make sure you got the same augmented matrices as me, and we'll start with this system of three linear equations. For the first row, which is where we'll start, we need to focus on the first equation. In the first column, we'll have the coefficient of x, which is 2. Then the coefficient of y, which is 4. Then the coefficient of z, which is 5. And then let's go ahead and draw that line to separate the coefficients from our constants. And our constant for the first row, which is the first equation, is 5. All right, we're making progress. Now, second row represents the second equation. The coefficient of x in the second equation is 1. The coefficient of y is 3. The coefficient of z is 3. And the constant is 2. By the way, notice all of these equations are in standard form. If your equations aren't in standard form, you'll have to put them in standard form before you represent them with the augmented matrix. All right, on to the third equation. The coefficient of x is 2. Coefficient of y is 4. Coefficient of z is 6. And the constant for the third equation is 2. I'll just go ahead and move the y column over a little bit so this looks a little neater. So there is our augmented matrix for a system of three equations. Just as you would expect, the columns represent x, y, z, then constants, and the rows represent the first, second, then third equation. By the way, if we were to switch around the order of two of these equations, that would of course give us a different augmented matrix. The rows would represent different equations now, but the math that we're going to end up performing on the matrices would still give us the same solution to the equations. Like you would expect, switching the order of the equations is a pretty unimportant change. It doesn't really mean anything but it would change the augmented matrix. Right now, this equation is represented in the first row, and so on. All right, let's move on to the next example. This is a system of two linear equations, and just to mix it up, I'll write the augmented matrix in purple. To start off, in the first row, we will represent the first equation. We'll begin with the coefficient of x, which is, oh no, this equation starts with y. Make sure we take the coefficient of x. That's the variable that needs to be represented in the first column. The coefficient of x is negative 12. So this equation here, yeah, it's basically in standard form, but it's kind of written in a silly way. The x should probably come first because that is convention and that will help keep you from making mistakes. So just be sure to be careful. The coefficient of y then, is 15, and now we'll separate this from the part of the matrix containing the constants. The constant here is 3. Second row, second equation, 
coefficient of x is negative 7, and the coefficient of y is negative 20. Make sure to be careful with those positives and negatives. Constant here is negative 4. That's it. That is the augmented matrix for the system of linear equations. Last example. Our last example is another system of three linear equations. I'll write the augmented matrix in red. First row, first equation, the coefficient of x is 1. The coefficient of y is, oh wait, it's not 2 because that's z. What's the coefficient of y? There is no y. The coefficient of y then will have to be 0. How many y's do we have? We have none of them, so it's 0. Coefficient of z is 2, and then we'll separate the constants. The constant here is 4. So just make sure you're careful. Sometimes you might not have a particular variable in one of your equations. Moving on to the second row, second equation, the coefficient of x is 1, the coefficient of y is 1, the coefficient of z is 1, and the constant is 6. And then the third equation, coefficient of x is 3, coefficient of y is 3, coefficient of z is 4, and the constant is 2. And that's all there is to representing systems of linear equations using an augmented matrix. And remember, the idea with the augmented matrix is that now we'll be able to work with the coefficients and the constants from the system of equations at the same time, because we've put them into the same matrix. And we'll talk about what we're going to do with these and how we'll use them to solve equations next time. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Scaling the stratus